Once upon a time, there lived a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel. Their mother had passed away when they were babies. They lived with their dad in a hut in the forest. Their dad was trying to earn their living by working as a woodcutter and was looking after the kids at the same time. A couple of years passed and struggling to juggle work and two kids at the same time, their dad decided to get married again. The woodcutter's wife was from a wealthy family and she hated the fact that they were poor and she had to live in a small ruined hut deep into the forest. Plus, she did not like her stepchildren at all. On a cold winter night, as they were getting ready for bed, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother talking to their dad. How are you going to get through this winter? We don't have enough food. If you do not get rid of these kids, we will all starve to death. Their dad opposed furiously. No need to argue. I made up my mind. Tomorrow we'll take them to the woods and leave them there. Hearing all that, Gretel started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> her brother Hansel comforted her. Please don't worry, Gretel. Somehow we'll find our way back home. Later that night, Hansel snuck out and collected as many pebbles as he could in his pockets. In the morning, they all started to walk towards the forest. Their father told them that they were going for a family hike. As they were walking, without anyone noticing, Hansel dropped the pebbles to mark the way back. In the afternoon, their dad and stepmother lit a fire and told them that they will be back soon. They walked off and vanished in the woods. Of course, they did not come back. When the night fell, the horrible sounds of all the wild animals in the forest started to echo around them. Shivering with the horrifying sounds of the wolves, Hansel and Gretel did not leave the fireside until the moonrise. Then they started to follow the pebbles shining in the moonlight and walk towards home. Well done, Hansel. This was very clever of you. When the kids came back home, their dad was very happy and surprised at the same time. Their stepmother also acted as if she was happy, but deep inside, her decision was still the same. She was very upset that they were back. After three days, the stepmother tried to get rid of them again. This time at night, she locked Hansel and Gretel's door and did not allow Hansel to collect pebbles again. But Hansel was a clever boy. When they were walking to the forest in the morning, this time he dropped the breadcrumbs that he had put in his pocket the night before and again made a trail all the way back home. Around noon, their father and stepmother made up an excuse and went off, leaving them all alone in the forest again. Realising that they were not coming back, Hansel and Gretel wanted to start walking back home before it got dark. But this time, they could not find the trail they left, because all the breadcrumbs were eaten by the birds. Gretel started crying. For the first time, Hansel also felt hopeless. This time the kids were really lost. With no food and scared to death, they wandered around the forest for three days. On the third day, they saw a bird, white as snow. The bird chirped songs with its beautiful voice for them. forgot their hunger for a moment and started to follow the bird. The bird brought them in front of a funny looking house. This house had walls of bread, a roof made out of cake and windows of candy 
and was covered with colourful cream all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes. The house looked incredibly delicious. The kids forgot all about how tired they were and started to run to the house. Just as they were both going to have a bite from the house, they heard a voice from inside. Oh! Now who is nibbling on my house? They looked around and they saw a cute and sweet old lady at the door. When they told her all about what had happened to them, she felt very bad for them and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. It was dark, scary and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, the kids did not care much. The old lady brought all kinds of food and desserts for them and the kids ate food that they hadn't had before. That night, they slept on the softest bed they had ever seen. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady wasn't there. They started to look around. At the end of the corridor, they saw a small door. When they opened the door, they found cases full of gold and treasure inside. They were very surprised, of course. Hansel wanted to get in and take a closer look. Right at that moment, they heard her voice again. And what do you think you are doing? When they turned around, the kids faced the witch standing right there in front of them. Apparently, the old lady was a witch leading the kids to a dungeon with a house covered with cake and candy. The kids tried to run away but the door was locked. The witch pulled Hansel by the hair and locked him in a cage. Then she dragged Gretel to the kitchen. Your brother is too skinny. Cook some food for him and make him fat. When he's in good shape, he'll be a delicious meal for me. But don't you dare eat anything. All the food is only for him. Having no choice, Gretel did what she asked for. Fortunately, Hansel was a clever and wise boy. He decided to trick the evil-hearted witch. Every night when the witch was asleep, he was digging a hole in the ground of the cage. The witch was controlling Hansel every morning to see if he gained weight or not. But Hansel wasn't eating anything his sister cooked. Instead, he was burying them in the hole that he digged. In the meantime, the witch was telling Gretel to cook more. This went on for days until finally the witch had enough. Fat skinny! I don't care anymore! Today I will make Hansel pie! She turned to Gretel. Look in the oven to see if the dough is baked enough. Although she was in fear, Gretel was also a wise girl just like her brother. She understood that the witch was going to push her in the oven. I can't get my head in there and see the dough whined Gretel. The witch pushed her aside and stuck her head inside. Gretel gathered all her strength and pushed the old witch into the oven and closed the oven door. <coughs> Gretel knew where the witch was hiding the keys. She ran straight away and saved Hansel from the cage. The flames from the oven covered the whole house. Hansel and Gretel ran away from the burning house into the woods. But they did not know where to go. A while later, they came across a river. A giant swan took them one by one to the other side of the river. The kids looked around and suddenly they realised where they were. They ran home as fast as they could. Seeing his kids, father was full of joy. 
With tears of joy, he explained to them how their stepmother had gone back to her parents' house soon after they had left them in the forest. And how sorry he was for all that he did, and no matter how hard he had searched for them, they were nowhere to be found. The kids loved their father very much, so they forgave him. But another surprise was waiting for their father. They both reached their pockets and brought out gold and diamonds they had found in the witch's home. Their father could not believe his eyes. All the problems that their family had ever had went away and they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl. This girl wore a red riding hood at all times. That's why everybody used to call her Little Red Riding Hood. Darling! Yes, Mummy? You know your grandmother is ill. Would you take her the cookies I baked and the fresh herbs I picked from the woods? Of course, Mummy, I will. The little girl, with her red riding hood as always, started her journey to her grandmother's house. Do not leave the road in the bunny forest, sweetheart, said her mother as she was leaving. Little Red Riding Hood started walking in the forest while joyously singing songs. I wonder why they call it the bunny forest. I haven't seen any bunnies along the way. Little Red Riding Hood came to a road filled with flowers. There were all kinds of colored flowers. I should pick some flowers for my grandmother. She'll be very pleased. While Little Red Riding Hood was picking the flowers, she did not realize that she was drifting away from her path. At that moment, she heard a sound coming from the bushes. Suddenly, a big bad wolf approached in front of her. Little Red Riding Hood was so scared that when she saw the wolf right in front of her eyes, she dropped the basket that she was carrying. The wolf jumped closer to her and collected the cookies she had dropped from the basket and gave them back to Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood was amazed by this unexpected gesture from the wolf. Thank you. Where are you heading, little girl? To my grandmother's house, the yellow house at the end of this forest. She is not feeling well, so I'm bringing her cookies and healthy herbs. Hmm, really? By the way, you can call me Little Red Riding Hood like everybody else does. I'll head on first and let your grandmother know that you're on your way so that you can continue picking up your beautiful flowers. Right at that moment, he heard a gunshot of an approaching hunter's rifle and ran away as fast as he could. Little Red Riding Hood looked around for a moment and started crying, realizing that she was lost. Hearing her crying, the hunter approached and came next to her. What are you doing alone here, little girl? It's very dangerous around here. I'm looking for a big bad wolf whom I've been hunting for a very long time. Little Red Riding Hood was very ashamed because she had not listened to her mother and left the road in the bunny forest. So she could not tell the hunter that she had met the wolf. Um, well, I was bringing cookies to my ill grandmother living at the end of the forest and I got lost. Let me bring you to your grandma's home then. They started to walk together. And right then, the wolf took a shortcut and quickly made it to the grandmother's house. He knocked on the door. The grandmother yelled from inside. Who is it? The wolf changing his voice. It's me, Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood. I brought you cookies and fresh herbs from the woods. The door is open, my dear. You can come in. 
The wolf smirked and stormed in through the open door. When a while later, Little Red Riding Hood and the hunter arrived at the grandmother's house. Go, little girl. Go next to your grandmother as soon as possible. <laughs> the hunter went back on his way. Little Red Riding Hood knocked on the door. Her grandmother yelled from inside. Who is it? Um, it's me, Grandma, Little Red Riding Hood. The door is open, my darling. You can come in. Little Red Riding Hood hesitated for a moment. Because the sound she heard did sound a little different than her grandmother. She then remembered that her grandmother was ill. Well, grandmother probably sounds like that because she is ill. Little Red Riding Hood opened the door and went in. The wolf dressed in grandmother's clothing, with her nightcap and her glasses, was lying in the bed. He also closed the drapes so that it became dark inside and Little Red Riding Hood could not recognize him. I thank you, darling, for all your trouble getting all the way here to bring me food. Come next to me so I can give you a hug. Come, my darling. Come closer. Little Red Riding Hood left the basket on the floor, but she did not get too close to the bed because her grandma looked different. So long, Grandma. So that I can hug you better. Mm, why are your ears so big? So that I can hear you better. But why are your eyes so huge? So that I can see you better. Mm, why are your teeth so sharp, Grandmother? So that I can eat you better. <laughs> The wolf jumped out of the bed and charged at the Little Red Riding Hood. Help! At that moment, Little Red Riding Hood realized that it wasn't her grandmother lying in the bed, but instead the big bad wolf she had ran into along Help! the way. Help me! The hunter heard Little Red Riding Hood scream. Help! Help me! And ran straight to the house stormed into the open door and caught the wolf immediately. I finally got you, big bad wolf. Now you're in my hands. The hunter cut the wolf's belly and rescued the grandmother. Thank you for saving us, Mr. Hunter. You're welcome. But promise me, little girl, that you will never forget what your mother asks of you. With great appetite, Grandmother ate all the cookies Little Red Riding Hood had brought for her, boiled the healthy herbs to make a cup of tea, and instantly got well. Little Red Riding Hood promised her grandmother that she will never ever fall into the words of a bad wolf again. Little Red Riding Hood was walking in the forest once again, singing along merrily as she ran into the same wolf again. The wolf was punished by the hunter to clean the forest. And he was very ashamed about what he did when he saw the Little Red Riding Hood. The bunny forest became full of joy, bunnies and flowers like it was once before.